In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint simple glow effects. Hi everyone, and welcome to another Brushstroke Painting Guide. I'm Brushstroke, and as you heard from the intro there, this video is going to be looking at adding simple glow effects to your models. Now this can be anything from a pair of glowing eyes, to magic rune symbols, power weapons, even lit up keypads. And what this can do is bring that extra interest and visual impact to your miniatures. So what this guide is going to do is to show you the simple steps it's going to take to create those glows, and even how you can choose the colour that you want them to be. Now before we begin, I really want you to get the most out of this tutorial, as throughout it may refer to various techniques or processes which aren't covered in detail in this video. So to help you out, I've created a series of videos which cover these hobby fundamentals in detail, covering a whole host of hobby topics from preparing your minis for painting, through to how to thin your paints, how thin is thin, brush care, wet palettes, washes and more. So if you'd like to know more about that series of videos, please click this link above or you can check it out in the description below. I also get a lot of people asking what paintbrushes I use. Now, thanks to the amazing guys at Artus Opus, I now have a brush stroke paintbrush set, which includes all the brush types and sizes I use in my tutorials, making it super easy for you to use whilst painting along. And not only that, they also come in a beautiful exclusive presentation box with the brushstroke branding. So if you'd like to know more about these brushes, then please do click the link above or check out the description below. And finally, in this video, I'm going to be applying the glow effect to pre-painted models, in this case Necrons. Now, if you'd like to know the recipes I use for painting them, then you can find those out by clicking the link above or in the description below. Okay, so let's make a start on some painting. And as you can see, I've painted the majority of my Necron already, and I've just left the glow effect to add. But before we dive in, I just want to pause and have a quick think about what it is we're trying to do, and break it down into steps so that it makes it easier for you to replicate onto your models. So really, if we're going to be painting a glow, there's just two areas that we need to consider. There's the area which is going to be creating the glow, and then we need to consider the area which is going to be affected by that glow. So let's take a closer look. And the first area that I want to give a glow effect to is going to be this symbol on the chest. Now, to make it look like it's glowing, we obviously need to make it nice and bright and light. So we're going to paint that in in white. But painting something white alone is not enough to give it the impression it's a light. You also need to show that the areas around it are being affected by that light source. Now, this is where your first decision comes in, because you need to decide how intense you want your light source to be. So for this example, I'm going for a, a bit of a soft glow. So I don't want it to be super bright, like it's actually illuminating the whole of the model. I want it to be a lot more contained and feel like it's just illuminating the area around that light source. So if I take the symbol on the chest as the center of my light source or my glow, and I imagine a circle of light radiating from it, the bigger the circle, the more intense that light would be because more area would be affected by that light. So if I keep it quite small and contained, anything that falls within that circle is going to be something that I need to show is being affected by that glow. So in this example, that's going to be the inside edges of this rib cage, the underside of his chin, all the edges around the symbol thing itself, perhaps even the endmost edges of the collarbone bit here, and maybe because this tube is quite shiny, it might catch the topmost edges of this down at the bottom here as well. Okay, so that gives us a good idea as to the areas which are going to be affected if this centre symbol was glowing. So let's do the same process now if we wanted to give this Necron some glowing eyes. So obviously the light sources are going to be the two eyes themselves. And then we don't want it to be super intense, so we want it to be a soft glow. So the radius from them is going to be quite small and quite contained, which will probably mean that the only areas that we need to worry about being affected are going to be the edges around the eyes themselves. Okay, so I think that gives us a plan and something that we can refer to. So let's see how we can translate that into painting onto the model. Starting off with painting in the areas which are going to be glowing. So like I said, I'm going to do that in white. And for this, I'm going to use the best white I know, which is White Star from Tooth in Coats. 
So starting off then with the eyes, nice and easy. I've thinned the paint with a little bit of water on my palette. I'm just gonna paint in each of these eyeballs so that it looks a nice, clean, bright white. Now you should find that the coverage for this paint is absolutely brilliant, but you definitely want to get a really crisp, bright, solid white. So do make sure that you apply thin layers and build up to that solid finish because it's really important for the final effect that we're after. And then when those eyes are painted in, I'm now gonna paint in the symbol on the chest and exactly the same process again, nice and thin and build up to a nice solid, crisp, bold white. So with those light sources now painted in, we can move on to the next part, which as you remember, is going to be the areas which are gonna be affected by our glow. Now you'll be pleased to know that the chances are you've already painted these in, but basically what you need to make sure is any of the areas which are going to have that glow effect on them, you have a nice sharp edge highlight already applied. So for example, I've left the edge highlighting on the area around the symbol here, which is a black panel, and it should have a nice sharp gray edge highlight around it. And as you'll see later, that's important because we're gonna tint that to the color of the glow that we want. So this stage is all about checking against the plan that you made before to make sure that all the edges that are going to have that glow on them already have a nice edge highlight in their respective colours. Now don't worry, I know it sounds complicated, but it is really simple and it'll make so much more sense when you see it in the later stages. But just before we get to that, I just want to do one more part and add some more glow effects to this Necron, and that's going to be for his weapon. So I'm going to run through exactly the same process that I did before with the main body and just identify where I want the source of those glows to be and any of the edges that will be affected by those glows. So let's just run through it. I'm going to start off with the uh, power element here. So I'm going to paint those in white and then the surrounding edges would be affected by that glow. Uh, and then maybe do this tubing and any of the edges that will be affected by that glow and then the orbs along the barrel I'll also make those glow and then obviously pick out all of the edges which are going to be affected for those glows as well Okay, so that's my plan. So now I'm going to start off by painting the hose. Now I thought it might be quite cool to not only have it glowing, but have a variation of intensity, like it's glowing from the middle. And to do this, I'm not going to paint the whole thing pure white. Instead, I'm going to paint the whole thing a gray first. And for this, I'm going to use some Celestra gray from Games Workshop. So nice and straightforward this stage. The key thing really to remember is to make sure that you thin your paint because you want it to be ultra smooth and ultra clean. So I've added some water on my palette and I've thinned it down and I'll apply several coats to build up to a solid finish. And with that gray now painted in, I can go ahead and paint in all my light sources using the same white as before, which is some white star from Two Thin Coats. Which, following my plan, means I paint in the power elements here, making sure that I apply multiple layers to build up to a nice solid finish. And then I can move on to the orbs on the gun barrel. And as always, I've thinned it with that water on my palette and it's going on really cleanly and smoothly, making sure that I apply multiple layers to build up to that solid finish. Now, I know I'm repeating this, but it's really important for this light effect that you do get a really solid, bright, vivid white. So do make sure that you build it up using multiple layers. And then finally, I can move on to the hose. Now, as I said before, what I'm thinking of doing is having a difference in intensity. So I'm gonna paint a bit of a stripe along the inside curve here of the hose where I want that glow to be at its brightest. So I'm thinking something that looks a bit like that. Okay then, so quick recap. I've painted in all of the light sources for my glow in white and I've made sure that all of the edge highlighting is done for everything that's gonna be affected by those glows. So I'm gonna call that my baseline and now comes the fun part where I can add in your colored glow. Now I'm gonna show a few examples in this video, but let's kick off with blue. And for this, I'm gonna use some Talisar blue contrast paint, thinned down with some contrast medium from Games Workshop. So I thinned the Talisar blue down with the medium to a ratio of around 50-50 and for this stage I'm looking to apply it as a heavy glaze which means I'm not wanting it to pull up in the recesses to add shadow but instead I'm taking advantage of the staining property of a contrast paint so that I can tint the surface blue. 
but I've thinned it down enough now so that I can still see the paints underneath. Which means as I'm painting this onto the surface, I'm not losing any of those shadows and highlights that I've already painted, but instead all I'm doing is tinting them the lovely blue glow colour. And it's dead simple to do, all you need to do is paint it over all the areas that you've painted white for that glow effect, and any of the edges which are going to be affected from that glow according to our plan. Now don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're trying to paint this so that it's a solid colour. All you're doing is tinting it, remember, so just apply it over the white areas and the edges and make sure that you get a nice blue tint, but don't go too over the top trying to make it a really rich blue. It's far better to apply too little than too much, so if you do find after the first application of this that it's not quite blue enough, then you can always go back and add a second coat. But do be careful that you want this to be quite subtle and you still want to make sure that you can see the paint underneath to get that true glow effect. So now I'm just going to work my way around all the areas that are going to have this glow effect and paint in that blue tint. Also, not forgetting, because we're applying this as quite a heavy glaze, it will take that little bit longer to dry, so do give it plenty of time and make sure it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. And when it is fully dry, you should now have something that looks like this. Now, if you're anything like me, you may find that on some of the edges where you're applying the tint, you got a bit carried away and you've overdone it a bit. So now's a good time to go back and tidy those things back up. So in this particular case, I'm using the Rune Lord brass that I painted the Necron in and I thinned it down so it's quite transparent and I'm just going to go over those edges where I want to make it less intense for that tinting and it gives a nice smooth transition between the two colors. So when you're happy that you've neatened everything back up again and it's all looking how you want it to, it's time to move on to the next stage. And that's going to be adding another layer of white to all of the light sources for our glows. And for this, I'm going to carry on using the same white as I did before, which is White Star from Two Thin Coats. This time though, I'm not looking to paint the whole area white again, but actually what I want to do is keep some of that pale blue tinted area showing around the edges and just paint the white within the middle. So for example, on the eyes here, I just want to put a little dot in each of the center of those, but keep the blue around the outside. This is to try and give the impression that the light source is more intense in the center. Likewise, on these power elements here, I'm just going to paint the top ridge, which will then give that extra focus and intensity. And likewise, on the glowing orbs on the barrel, I'm going to paint a center dot onto each of those orbs, keeping that tinted blue showing around the outside. And then finally, on the hose, I'm going to do exactly the same thing and try and paint a white line within that pale blue tinted line that I painted before. And then as a final touch, just to bring that white and blue together, I'm going to apply a thin glaze of my thinned down Talisar blue over the top. And it really is just a light glaze. All I'm looking to do is just to wet the surface with the thinned down Talisar blue. And that'll be enough just to ever so slightly tint the white and blend it into the other blues beneath and give a bit of a soft transition. And again, do make sure that you give it plenty of time to dry fully and you should end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so that's the end of the process of how to paint a simple glow, but I thought it might be quite useful to you to show how you can take that process and adapt it to paint different colors. So let's take a look now at a recipe for painting green glows. So what I've done so far is I've already painted in my glow baseline, which if you remember was painting in all the light sources in that bright white and making sure that the edges that are going to be affected have their respective edge highlights painted in as well. So I'm now ready to add in the green glow and for this I'm going to use some Tesseract Glow thinned down with some Lamian Medium from Games Workshop. 
And the ratio I've used for this, again, is a 50-50 mix, just to thin that down and make it a little bit more translucent. And I'm gonna apply it in exactly the same way as I did with the blue. So I'm gonna apply a heavy glaze over all of the white glow areas and all of the edges which will be affected by the glow, giving them a nice, bright, vivid green tint while still retaining the shadows and highlights they had before. And again, for the hose here, I've painted it in the gray first and then the white highlight so that when I add the tint over the top, I'll get that two tone effect. And just as before, don't forget to give it plenty of time to dry before moving on to the next stage. And if you remember, that next stage is neatening things back up again. So as usual, I've overpainted in a few areas. So I'm just gonna go back in now with the graphite that the Necron is painted in and make everything look neat and tidy again. Okay, so I've neatened everything back up again and now it's time to move on to the next stage. And if you remember, that stage is gonna be adding a layer of white to all of the glow areas. And for this, I'm gonna use some White Star from Two Thin Coats. Not forgetting, of course, to still leave some of that green tinted area showing around the edges. Now all I need to do is finish it off with a light glaze of the thinned down Tesseract Glow all over those white details. And when that's done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So hopefully now you're starting to see that the process of painting these glows is exactly the same. And to change the end color, all you need to do is change the color that you glaze with. So let's put that to the test and do one more and let's do a red glow. Okay, so just as before, I've painted in my initial glow baseline, which if you remember, was painting in all the areas I want to be glowing in that bright white. And then I've made sure that all the areas that are gonna be affected by that glow have their edge highlights in their respective colors. So I'm now ready to add in the red glow. And for this, I'm gonna use some Angron Red Clear, thinned down with some Lamia Medium from Games Workshop. And the ratio I'm gonna use for this again is a 50-50 mix and I'm going to apply it in exactly the same way I did with the two previous examples, which means I'm going to apply it as a heavy glaze over all of the white glow details and all of the edges which will be affected by those glows. And again, for the hose here, I've painted it in the gray first and then the white highlight so that when I add the tint over the top, I'll get that two tone effect. And just as before, don't forget to give it plenty of time to dry before moving on to the next stage. And if you remember, that next stage is neatening things back up again. So as usual, I've overpainted in a few areas. So now I'm just gonna go back and neaten everything back up again with some of the Vallejo gold that the Necron was painted in. So 
So with those corrections now made, I can move on and add that white layer to all of the glowing details. And again, I'm going to use my white star from Two Thin Coats. And of course, making sure to leave some of that red showing through around the edges. Now all I need to do is finish it off by adding that light glaze of the thin down Angron Red over all of the white details. And when that's done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, I'm hoping that gives you a good idea of how easy it is using that same process to get different glow colors and different results. So why not have a play around yourself, see what colors you can create simply by changing that glazing color. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful. And of course, a massive thank you to my channel members whose names are going across the screen now. Your support for the channel is very much appreciated. If you did enjoy this video, then please do hit that like button and drop a comment below. If you'd like to see more of these recipe videos, then please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see. Also, don't forget to check out the description below where I'm going to list all of the paints that I've used for this recipe and where you can get those at discount prices. So it's definitely worth checking out. And you'll also find all the links to the videos I mentioned earlier too. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. Speaking of other videos, I'd love it if you stayed on the channel, so why not stay and check out another recipe video or perhaps one of my other painting videos where you can see these recipes in action.